Hello, program. Uh, join us now, retired Air Force Colonel Walter Boyne is a uh, former director of the National Air and Space Museum who says uh, the Columbia disaster was no surprise. He'll tell us why in a, in a minute. Former NASA engineer Thomas Noyes believes the suspect tiles were indeed uh, probably the culprit. Uh, John Pike, director of global security, uh, another well-known expert on defense, space, and intelligence policies. Uh, gentlemen, before I ask you a question, what I want to do is show you uh, uh, a, a slow motion version of the videotape of, of uh, Columbia coming in. Look, look right there. See, see, that's the spacecraft to me. It's, it's, its stern is pointing to us. Its nose is pointing away. Uh, and it's moving from right to left. So obviously, its left wing is what's leading the charge there. It's, uh, it's clearly out of uh, uh, attitude uh, from the proper reentry, which is nose uh, pointed, raised, uh, with the bottom of the craft coming in. Uh, Re-rack that one more time. I want to I show that one more time to the audience, just to be crisp, crystal clear. OK, we're going to come back. Uh, uh, as we re-rack that, I, I just wonder, Colonel Boyne, if you think, uh, uh, is this something that would be uh, consistent with the damage to the left wing? Could it cause that kind of attitude change? Or is this perhaps a, a simple computer error? The computer got it wrong and had the wrong attitude as the craft came through the, uh, through the atmosphere. I think it's probably results from thermal damage uh, causing the aircraft to turn and, and getting into that attitude. Uh, I doubt if there's a uh, computer-induced uh, attitude from the, uh, at ac in that accident. So do you think that that is, and uh, uh, you know, Dave, you can re-rack it as many times as you want. Uh, Colonel Boyne, do you think that this, this attitude problem is consistent with these preliminary theories uh, on the damage to the left wing, causing damage to the tile, causing a, an, a, an acute thermal uh, reaction uh, upon re-entry. Uh, do you think that, that what we are seeing, is that video evidence corroborates that theory? I, I, I think it's, uh, the aircraft is out of control. It's tumbling. And do you think that the, uh, the damage that uh, is now being speculated uh, upon is, uh, or could be the result of that? It, it, certainly, uh, the, the thermal damage would cause the uh, aircraft to lose control. It would tumble and then disintegrate. So, uh, all right, let me, I'll come back to you, Colonel. Let me go to John Pike now. Uh, uh, your, your feelings on this big picture, the, uh, the fact that the, it happens 80 seconds after liftoff, they discover it the next day, they talk about it, they engineer it, they report to the Columbia astronauts in space of the incident, but then have decided that it's uh, inconsequential and that nothing in any case could be done about it and that they had to come home on board that space shuttle. Well, Geraldo, frankly, I think that it's very difficult to imagine uh, how it was that seeing that very large piece of insulation uh, come ripping off of the external tank, uh, where it could have stripped off the tiles off the bottom of the orbiter, how it was that they would have not gotten the Defense Department to get a look at the orbiter to try to understand what the damage okay. was. I just can't understand it. Uh, stand by, uh, John, uh, and coming to you, uh, uh, Thomas Noyes. Just stand by, folks. Right back. Critical stuff. If you're living with Crohn's disease, living the life you want to live may not always be easy. Sometimes it's hard to enjoy even everyday activities. But there's something you should know. Today's maintenance treatments have helped thousands of Crohn's patients. These treatments not only relieve painful symptoms, but many people actually experience remission level control without the side effects of steroids. Talk to your gastroenterologist and call this number for your free information kit. Call now, because living with Crohn's should be just that living. The shuttle Columbia. It was a mission that started with seven brave men and women, but ended in tragedy. As information continues to unfold about this disastrous and devastating event, stay with the Fox News Channel for our special night of live programming. Tonight, join us for Tragedy in the Sky, the Shuttle Columbia. Our special primetime lineup will bring you complete coverage and the very latest in this ongoing story. Tonight, stay with the Fox News Channel. These men and women assumed great risk in the service to all humanity. In an age when space flight has come to seem almost routine, it is easy to overlook the dangers of travel by rocket 
and the difficulties of navigating the fierce outer atmosphere of the Earth. These astronauts knew the dangers, and they faced them willingly, knowing they had a high and noble purpose in life. Because of their courage and daring and idealism, we will miss them all the more. Amen, Mr. President. You know, I, I, I wanted to go to space since a, a kid watching Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers. Uh, you know, these are antique shows from the dawn of television. But I was uh, one of the uh, uh, journalists who applied to be a journalist in space. That program was very active. Uh, we had submitted our essays and had made some preliminary cut. And then the Challenger happened in that 1986. That program, of course, was scuttled. And now one of the big controversies is precisely because spaceflight is so dangerous. Uh, you know, why send people into space who are not absolutely essential to the mission? Uh, I know that a lot of people are, are disturbed that, uh, you know, there are people who are passengers allegedly for reasons other than the, the, the needs, the purpose of the mission. But be that as it may, uh, we've been showing you now this uh, slow motion of, uh, of uh, Columbia's re-entry. Uh, John Pike, tell us, uh, I think you have a different take on what we're seeing. What is that? Well, it's unclear what we're looking at here, but frankly, when I first saw this image, it looked to me like it was simply a lens flare off of the point source of the re-entering shuttle. I don't think it's, it's that. I don't think it's that. I mean, I, I, maybe we could re... re I, th I, I agreed with you, and that was certainly my impression also. And then uh, our, our colleague, uh, John Scott, uh, was the first one, I think, to slow it down. And I, when I really look at it, uh, it looks to me like it's the outline of the, of the right. shuttle Certainly, itself. You know, certainly when you're looking at uh, that very tight close-up, it does look like you're basically looking at the rear of the orbiter and you can see the three uh, space shuttle yeah, main that's, engines that's there. Not, that's not a flare. That's, well, see, I, that said, I would uh, be hesitant to uh, conclude that amateur video shot at that distance would be able to extract that much detail yeah. Out of it, particularly when as soon as we zoom out just a little bit, we're losing all of the detail. And well, then it starts to break apart, which is right. Uh, all right, let me let me go to. Uh, <clears throat> haven't heard from uh, Thomas Noyes yet, uh, who is indeed a former NASA engineer and uh, an expert in trajectory design. Uh, take it away, uh, Thomas. What do you what do you think we're seeing there? Well, Horado, thanks for having me on. And first, I'd like to uh, convey my uh, the prayers of. of, of you know, me and my family to, to the astronauts and their families, uh, you know, the, the loss is just tremendous and uh, our hearts go out to them. Uh, now, to your previous questions as far as the uh, attitude of the shuttle during reentry, that's actually quite normal. It's called a roll reversal. Uh, there's really two ways to control, control de drag deceleration uh, during entry, and one is angle of attack, and the other one is the angle of roll or the roll reversal. So, you know, if, if we've got, you know, the shuttle coming down uh, at approximately 40 degrees uh, to the velocity vector, it, 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 it is a part of the guidance, entry guidance, is to uh, do roll reversals to control uh, the drag deceleration. Wait, because Thomas, Thomas let, me, let me ask you this then. I, I, I get you. But uh, during uh, Ron Dinamore, and I think that he's a, a wonderful guy, I mean, a, a sincere man, a pained man, an honest man, I, I think NASA's really got a, a winner there, however uh, tragic this, uh, this mission is. But uh, he mentioned that the com it's being driven by the computer. The computer is trying to compensate, uh, and he reported that from when the craft was somewhere over the coast of California coming in toward Texas. The computer now is trying to make good on uh, some attitude problems. Isn't it? Isn't it? logical well, I, to assume that the, the reaction just couldn't, it starts swaying, yawing, pitching, you know, I'm a sailor. I don't know much about space, but. No, uh, I, I think you're, you're right. I mean, that's, uh, but, you know, Didymore also said that, uh, that it was well within the bands of control. So they're seeing that, you know, I, I think it's very important for all of us uh, that, are, that are listening to Didymore and, and what's coming out of NASA to make sure we, we don't misinterpret uh, their openness and sharing data to uh, you know, that. the conclusions that, that have come. So Roger that. Okay. The, 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 the small, the, you know, if I had one tile out on the leading edge of a you know, shuttle or any vehicle, I could see a difference in the lift of that wing. So he's just saying that they're seeing some corrections uh, in, in, the, uh, in this trim of the vehicle on the left side. Uh, Thomas, let me ask you this then. Uh, uh, do you believe that the culprit are these controversial tiles, uh, which have been controversial before? 
Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think you know the, something caused a structural failure, and I think it definitely is uh, the thermal protection system. I mean, Didymore during the conference just a few hours ago said you know about the the temperature around the, the left wheel well, and and you know he, he he would like to speculate, but it's not appropriate to do so at that time. There's something that happened, uh, and. Uh, it's not necessarily the insulation that came from the external tank. Uh, there's, there's been problems before with the, uh, the wheel well and the left landing gear before. Uh, uh, not necessarily on this vehicle, but just keeping those doors closed during entry. Is, uh, he, he talked about the, the process of seating those doors during the uh, shuttle processing. Right. So, you know, that, that is a, a weakness. And actually, you know, all, of, all the shuttle... Uh, the thermal protection system is one of the, the few areas of the shuttle that's what we call a single point of failure. You know, during ascent, we have multiple engines and, and multiple computers and, and ma many ways. If one goes out, you've got many different options. Right. There's just very few options, you know, when something happens and to when, the thermal when you're, protection When you're heading system. down, that thing's a rock coming down. Uh, let me go back that's to right. Colonel Boyne. Uh, I assume, again, now that maybe, maybe it's better that I'm ignorant because then I ask regular people's questions. I'm just a, I'm a lay person. I don't know much, but I know that from space you can take a picture of my watch and read the time. I would assume that the reverse is true. Is it not? Could you not, using one of the military's high-powered telescopes, is that to be true? And I know people at NASA. They work together. Their families live in the same neighborhoods. They're friends. We'd have to believe that somebody involved in the shuttle program would have intentionally ignored danger signs and allowed their friends to go up in space knowing those dangers. Is that possible? Uh, I, I really don't think that's possible. I, the, the shuttle, uh, to to best of my knowledge, is the uh, most uh, well understood, uh, most highly analyzed uh, system on the face of the earth and in, in the history of man. We There's uh, simulations uh, for every single system, uh, the, the external, the aerodynamics. Uh, there, there's, of course, when you have such a complex system and the way you manage that at NASA is to, to break down the system into the, in the different well, modules or, or subsystems. Sure. Thomas, and, I want hard evidence. I'm, I'm frankly getting a little tired of the conspiracy theories that almost are popping up by the hour. The New York Times today, NASA dismissed advisors who warned about safety, the whistleblowers. What evidence do we have that it was related in any way to the safety of these astronauts or somehow they broke the story that would have saved their lives? I find it distasteful without any hard facts. I, I, I completely agree with you. I, I completely agree. I, I think, you know, when, when Challenger was lost, there was uh, uh, some introspection within NASA uh, of, you know, did we push the envelope too far and, and uh, check off during, you know, launching during freezing weather. And, you know, maybe the only thing that would stick out in this launch is, uh, you know, this was an extremely heavy orbiter coming down in what we call a January atmosphere, which is a, a rather dense atmosphere, obviously, uh, January weather being colder in North America than, say, uh, June and July, it's, it was a denser atmosphere. So you have yeah. historically one of the heaviest orbiters coming down in one of the densest atmospheres. But, sure. you know, other than that, you know, I, I, there, there, I would say that there is uh, uh, a near zero chance that, that you know, some, some quick uh, decision was made that would endanger uh, well, the lives. It, I, th I think we also tend to take miracles for granted, and this has become routine. Uh, yes, but the I idea that, that we do what we do and that they do what they do and we go to the moon and we come back, that has become routine, is a, is a credit to all these guys. John, welcome back to the program. Look, um, I want to know, if, there, if people are going to accuse of criminal negligence, I want to know specifics. I don't want generalities. I don't want a hypothesis. I don't want a theory. I don't want a pundit. We've got to have strong, factual evidence, don't we? Well, I don't think at this point anybody is being accused of criminal evidence. I think that basically what we're trying to do is understand how it was that despite all of uh, the best efforts, apparent best efforts of NASA engineers, of the dedication of all of the contractors who've been working on this program for so many years, after all of the political leaders say that they're making safety the highest priority, 
how is it uh, that uh, this accident nonetheless took place? And unavoidably, I think as we learned with the Challenger accident, complex accidents like this have two components. One of them is the mechanical failure. What went wrong with the tiles or the external tank insulation or the gyro, uh, the na navigation and control system? The other is the institutional failure. How was it, that that mechanical error was allowed to get through the system. And in this case, for instance, there's already the suggestion that they knew that they had problems with the external tank uh, insulation, but that they were treating that with a as a maintenance problem, uh, something that would increase the cost of repairing the shuttle, rather than a safety problem, something that could endanger the entire John program. and Thomas, it's Alan Combs. Welcome to the program. Thomas, uh, Time Magazine did an interesting piece on this today. Let me show you part of what uh, they said. Uh, they said, though the space shuttle is viewed as futuristic, its design is three decades old. The shuttle's main engines, first tested in the late 70s, use hundreds more moving parts and do new rocket motor designs. The fragile heat dissipating tiles were designed before breakthroughs in material science. Is this after the fact quarterbacking or is this, uh, is this something that should have been looked at beforehand and is this an accurate uh, analysis? Well, 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 just because uh, systems are old uh, doesn't mean that they're, they're not safe. Certainly, we all fly on DC-9s and 737s that are much older than the shuttle and, and have many more hours in it than that. Uh, these systems were designed uh, to be safe and, and be best in, in their class when, when it, during the 70s when that happened. And, and many of them have actually been su substantially updated to be more safe. So uh, certainly an old system doesn't imply a lack of safety. Uh, actually, I would make the case that because it's so well understood and so well analyzed, that changes actually can be more dangerous sometimes uh, to, to an existing well understood system than, than to one, put one the of the other suggestions in this on. piece is that uh, this uh, did 28 other missions and should it have been on, you know, in the, in the sky that many times? Uh, did they try to use it too many times? Uh, I, I, it was designed for hundreds of missions. It was envisioned originally these shuttles would be going up monthly. Uh, I think the life expectancy, if you, if you ever went to the uh, Kennedy uh, Space Center and saw the processing facility and, and what they do to break down the or orbiter and take you know, almost all of the wires out of it to inspect it and the, the structure, I mean, it's, it's almost they rebuild it every single time they fly it. John, you concur with that? And, uh, well. I, I think that that's about right if you're talking about the individual technological components of the shuttle, but I don't think that it goes to the fundamental question that we're going to have to ask and answer over the next several weeks and months. Not whether the technology of the space shuttle is obsolete, but whether the entire conception of this space shuttle is obsolete, because let's remember when it was originally conceived a third of a century ago, the idea was that it was going to fly once a week, that basically every payload that America launched, uh, many international payloads would all be flying on the space shuttle. Now for a lot of complex technology, safety, budget reasons, that didn't happen. And we're basically back right. to flying the space shuttle we, to uh, the space station and that's something we could do with a much smaller, much simpler vehicle. We got to take a break. We'll uh, talk about did NASA miss some of these safety things. Our heart and prayers go out to the families and colleagues of these brave astronauts. We'll have more on this when we come back and later. You won't believe some of the outrageous things that some Iraqis said after the tragedy.